Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with augmented reality. Today we're going to be looking at a new project that I created to demonstrate how to create an AR racing game by using AR Foundation. I'm also going to be using the new input system for a lot of the controls that we'll have on our mobile phones. I'm also going to be using Photoshop to create these UI components. So we're going to be going through the entire process. The demo that I created, you can see playing behind the scenes and we're gonna be able to accelerate the car, we're gonna be able to turn the car left or right, and I'm gonna show you how to use the new input system to only not only get information from our keyboard, but also get information when we're actually using touch events. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, let me show you what we're gonna be doing today, which is to add overlays here to be able to control the car. This is gonna be an augmented reality application, but we need to start with the basics of getting the controls working. I also wanted to show you how the car is currently set up. So I have, you know, the environment here with a couple of bumps. The reason for those bumps is because we're going to be using LiDAR to basically drive in augmented reality. But for now, I'm just going to show you the components. So I have a car controller with a speed and a torque and also the minimum speed before the torque. This basically designates at what point we can start rotating the car. I also have the minimum speed before idle which is, you know, at what point do we stop the car so that I don't have to, we don't keep animating and actually moving and rotating the wheels. I also have a rigid body because that's what we're going to be using to move the car. We're going to be using physics. A box collider is, the reason why I have that box collider there is because that car was basically, you know, rotating. It was doing weird things. So I think this is the best configuration that I could find. If we go into the car itself, I have the body and I ended up creating this with Pro Builder. I actually had a lot of fun doing that. So I really recommend that you use Pro Builder. And I also have a box collider in here, which is the one that you see, you know, right here. Also for the wheels, I had a couple of things that I wanted to do. I, I tried using a sphere collider and that actually, actually didn't feel right. So I ended up changing it to using a wheel collider and it actually works a lot better. So I'll show you as soon as we get the controllers working. So that's going to be on every single one of the wheels. And then I also have a bumper, a bumper, and then our mirrors in here. So what I'm going to do is I want to start with the, with the basics, right? We're going to be using, doing the UI components. So I'm going to be jumping into Photoshop and let's go ahead and create a new, a new file. On the width here, we're going to be using, let's go ahead and do pixels and it's going to be a thousand by, by 600. I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And then this one's just going to be, I always like to have an alpha just in case I want to change the background just for different tests. And then in here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use the ellipse tool and let's go ahead and do the buttons first. Let me do that one more time. And I'm holding my shift key so that I can do a, you know, a, pro a proportional constraint on the resizing. And then we can change this as well. Let's go back here and on the appearance, I think I'm going to do, let's go ahead and do black and then the arrows are going to be white. So it's going to be for the left and right controller. And then here I'll just use this arrow. Let's go back here and then we can do, this one is actually going to be a different color. So let's do white. Let me do that one more time. I'm going to do a new layer and okay. And then change this to white. And then this one is going to make it right about that. Again, it doesn't need to be perfect. You know how I work. I start with, you know, basic things and then we can always, you know, we can always improve. It's more of an MVP that, you know, than a polished game. Okay. Hopefully it'll be polished, right? Once we get it all. Okay. So let's go ahead and rename this. It's going to be arrow. And then we can just call this one circle. And I, I like to name things. So we're just going to do, this is going to be for turning left. So what we're going to be using for the car when it's turning. And then I go ahead and duplicate it. This one's going to be the one for turning right. Excellent. And then we can just rotate the whole thing. So just, you know, use copy and paste to, to accelerate or, or velocity on, on how fast we get this done. Okay. So now I'm going to do another layer and this is going to be the one for the accelerator and we can do around the rectangle tool. I think that's fine. We have white. we need to change this to do, let's go ahead and do black because I'm going to be doing the, the button inside is going to be white, just, just like we did with the arrow. Let's go ahead and do, move that one there. And then let's do another layer. On this layer, we're gonna do the custom tool. And on this one, I'm gonna be using a pattern. So let's do that pattern. 
And then perhaps we can do, oh, let me undo that. We need to do white. And there we go. And I'm going to hold my shift button again just to constrain it. And I'm using my arrows just to kind of center it. We can also, Photoshop is also pretty smart. It'll give you, it'll align it for you sometimes. Okay, I think that, I think that works. And then let's go ahead and rename these. I'm just going to do, this, this one is going to be red. And then we can group these together. And this is going to be accelerator. Excellent. And I think that's everything that we need to do. So let's go ahead and see, hit save. This we can call it UI master. And don't ask me why I came up with that name. I think it just makes sense. And it's going to save in here and you know, it's going to load it. The texture type I'm going to do is Sprite 2D. It's going to be multiple. And the, let's go ahead and hit apply and save that. So if I open this up right now with the Sprite Editor, you're going to see that for some reason, Photoshop, it's adding kind of like a, a little gray area around it, around the buttons. And that's going to look bad on the, I'm really picky with UI. So what you're going to do is you're going to go here and click on remove Mate PSD, hit apply. So now if we go back into the Sprite Editor, you're going to see that it looks clean and beautiful. And that's why that option is so important. Then on the slice, I'm just going to go ahead and click a slice. It's going to slide everything for us. Hit apply. Now we have our bonds in here. Okay, but we're going to be, we're going to be needing a UI. So I'm just going to go ahead and go here, click on UI, and then canvas. So here's our canvas. And if we go into the scene view, let's go ahead and click on 2D. And we can see our canvas here. Just make sure like in the game you have the right, you know, orientation that you want. I'm going to be using iPhone XS Max landscape. And then that way, you know, everything is going to be sized. The canvas is going to be sized based on those settings. Okay, so that covers that. Let's go ahead and do, now we're going to be using UI. So let's do a button. And I think on the button, I'm going to be changing the sprite. So on the sprite, we're going to be using, let's start with the first one. And Unity has this really cool option here that it's going to size it correctly. You can see that it's sized correctly. I'm going to be removing the text because we don't need the text. I'm also going to be aligning this to the bottom left. So select that, the position, we can do like zero, perhaps 200. And then it's the one we can do something like that. Let's go ahead and increase the size. I think I'm going to do 300 by 300, perhaps 280 by 280. It's perfect. And then the position, we'll just use, I think that's too low. Let's do actually too high. We're going to do, okay, so I think that, I think that works. On the, on the alpha though, I don't want those to be covering the car if the car is here. We're going to be doing something like maybe 180 on the, oops, no, 10, 180. There we go. So that way we can see the button, but we can also see the car when, when the car is behind the button. Okay, so that looks good. And I think, let's go ahead and just rename this one. This one's going to be for our turning, our turning left. So that whenever we, you know, whenever we're turning left, this is going to execute that action. So I was going to do turn left button. Remember, I like to name things correctly. That way we can refer to them pretty easy. And then on this one, we're going to be doing turn right. Okay, perfect. And let's go ahead and change the sprite. This one is going to be that. We can just increment the, you know, the, the actual exposition here. Do something like this. And I also like to use round, you know, like even numbers. So we do 650. Okay, so I think that works. Just think about the UI experience, right? Like if you're holding this button with your thumb, with your, you know, your thumb, uh, I can't even talk, finger, then make sure they're, you know, they're close to each other. And I think that, I think that it's going to work. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this. Let's go ahead and cheat again. And this is going to be for our accelerator. So I'm just going to call it accelerator button. And then on this one, what I'll do is another thing that I noticed, it's going to make him capital letter just so that we can keep everything consistent. And let's go ahead and do that. Okay, perfect. So on this one, I need to change the sprite as well. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm also going to change the native side here. And I think that, I think that works. I think I made it about, yeah, I think I made it proportional. So that, that actually looks good. Okay. So then this one is going to be aligned to the right. And then we can just do zero and then increment this number or decrement it. 
think something like something like that works negative 400 works just fine if you wanted to increase the height you can do that as well we can do i think i'm just going to do i'm going to do 300 i don't want it to be proportional so i think that that works just fine okay so that's going to be our our button so we're going to need to be able to activate those buttons and to do that i'm going to be using the the new input system which we haven't really talked about, haven't really covered in the channel yet. So I'm going to do that. So let's go ahead and go into Window and then Package Manager. And in here, we're going to be changing this to Unity Registry. And I'm going to just search for Input System and go ahead and do that. And I'm going to be using the latest version, the, the version that is verified, hit Install. In, it's going to install. And I, I had to actually change the input system that I, that I was going to use by going through player settings. So I'm going to show you that as soon as this is done installing. All right, so it looks like that finished installing. And let's go ahead and go into File, Build Settings, Player Settings. And let's go ahead and, well, one thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to create an input, uh, a settings asset. So I'm going to click on Create. It's going to create basically a scriptable object. I'll show you where that is, which is right here. Okay, the other thing that we're going to need to do is if you go into, I think it's under player. I don't think so. It's actually under player. Make sure that your active input handling is set to new. You can also use both, but I recommend using new, new so that you, you, know, you get used to that. And it's actually pretty robust, so I really recommend using it. Okay, so that's everything that we need to do in there to get that created. So the other thing that we also need to do is we're going to go into the event system and if you notice, when we create the canvas, this got created automatically, but this is using the standalone input module, which is actually not, com you know, not compatible with what we'll need to do for the new input system. So we need to be able to press on this button, so we're going to need to change this. So we're going to click on Replace with Input System UI Input Module. It is going to do all the magic for us. It's actually going to use this file here, which Unity is already, you know, it already created for you. So we're going to be, we're, we're just going to assume that that's going to work. But we're going to need a couple more things. So I'm going to need to create a new, a new object here. It's going to be our player input. Player input. And this is going to be our on, right? And on this one, I'm going to need to create a new, basically a new input system. So a new player input. So I'm just going to go ahead and select player input. And this doesn't have an asset because we haven't really done anything with it. So I'm just going to go ahead and create the action file. It's going to ask us where we want to put it. I think I'm going to put it right at the same location where the other input scriptable object was. So I'm just going to hit save. And if we go into assets, you're going to see that it creates, it created these, you know, AR rays. And you know, it gives you an error. I don't know why. I think they have an issue, but we're just going to associate it here. And then that should fix it. The default scheme, if you were using multiple schemes, you can, you know, designate it here. I'm just going to set it to any. Add a switch. I think that's fine. The default map is going to be player. I think that's okay. And then UI input module, we're just going to leave this as default. I think that it's going to work just fine. And on the camera, I did want to associate the camera. So let's go ahead and associate the camera. And then the behavior that we're going to be using, you can, there's four different ones. The one that we're going to be using is going to be send messages. And this is really cool because it creates those automatically. And when I say that it creates those automatically, it actually goes in here. And it looks at every single one of these, and then it basically sends messages based on those names. So if I go in here, you're gonna see that on fire is basically prefixing the the, the the action with the word on, so that if you have a method that is called on fire, it's going to send a message to that method. So I'm actually gonna remove everything in here because we're gonna be using, we're gonna be creating them from scratch. Okay, so that is that piece, and then I'm also going to be creating a new script. So actually go into scripts here and create and then this is going to be our player input controller this is the one that is going to communicate to the with the car controller to to find out what actions the car controller needs to take so and then we'll just go ahead and drag it and drop it in here okay so that it's going to be that piece let's go ahead and go back into our new input manager and this is where we're going to be designating some of the new actions so I'm going to be creating a new action map. So let's create a new one. And this one is going to be called player. So on the new action, we need to tell it what we're going to be using. So on this one, I'm going to start with the accelerate. And then on the accelerate, we need to designate what kind of, 
what kind of action this is going to be. So I'm going to be using the pass through action and I'm going to be selecting button. This one, I need to determine, you know, what is going to be casting the acceleration. So we want to be able to, con to control this with our keyboard because I want to test it with our keyboard. We can also make a change so that we can also, you know, send touch events. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So for this, I'm going to be using the up arrow on my keyboard. I'm going to set it to, you know, to keyboard and mouse. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this. And then this one is going to be for reverse. So I want to be able to reverse the car as well. This one instead is going to be my down arrow. Perfect. Let's go ahead and right click on here, duplicate. And I'm going to duplicate it twice because we're going to need, we're going to need one for turning left. So on the turn left, I'm just going to call it turn left. And then we can just, you know, copy that value. And this one's going to be turn right. Excellent. Except like this one is going to be my left arrow. There we go. And then this one is going to be my right arrow. So let's go ahead and extend this and then right arrow. Okay. So I think that's everything that we need to do here. Make sure that you save your asset. And this is going to be like magic, right? Because now if you look in here, it says on controls change, which is part of the, you know, the player input. But we also have on reverse, on accelerate, because we're using send messages to, you know, to generate those. If you were to change this to say invoke unity events, you can also use, you can also see those here, player, accelerate, and you can also, you know, bind them through here if you wanted to do that. I'm going to use send messages because that's actually how I prepare this tutorial. Okay, so that's cool. And also now how do we actually, so if we hit play, and I, I actually, you know, hit the up arrow and then nothing is working because we actually haven't created those methods. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open my player input controller and we're going to be starting to, to actually do some code that is going to allow us to bind to those. Okay, just give it a second here until the project gets created. Unity load source script and we're going to start with, okay, so perfect. So we're not going to need any, any of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a private bool and this one is going to be turn left. We're going to need one for turn right. I'm also going to need one for reverse and one for acceleration, accelerate. And by default, bulls are going to be set to false. So we're good to go there. Then because we're using physics to move my, the car, I'm going to be using fix update. And we can just leave that. I don't like the accessor there. We can just do that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, if we are, we are accelerating, I'm going to be calling the one method of my controller. So on the car controller, I'm using a singleton pattern. So I should have an instance already. And then I'm just going to be calling accelerate. So it's going to be as easy as that. I try to make it, you know, as easy as I could. I'm going to be just duplicating this. And then on reverse, we're going to be doing reverse. And then I'll just do reverse on the, on turn right, I'm going to be turning, actually let's do turn left first and then turn left and then turn right. It's going to be turn right. So we can in fact just, just remove all these curly braces just to make it short and clean. Okay. So I think that is going to work just fine. And you know, we can do else if, if we wanted to on every single one of these. Just to keep things clean. There we go. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to need to do is I need to, I haven't really set these properties just yet. And make sure that you set this, going to be turn right to turn right. Accelerate, reverse, turn left and turn right. Actually, if you go into the accelerate method, I want to show you that I'm using a singleton pattern. And if I go into a singleton pattern, you know, you're going to see what I'm doing in here. So let's go back into my player input. I wanted to show you that so that you don't, you know, I don't want to keep the magic from you. And what I'll do here is I'm going to have to have public methods that are going to be the messages that the player input is broadcasting. So I'm going to do on turn left. We're going to be doing, we need to cap capture the input value and this is going to be input value. And we're going to have to be bringing in a new namespace in here, which is going to be the, the input system. There we go. And one of the things that I need to do here is I need to actually determine if the button is getting pressed. So if this button is getting pressed, then I can set this property here. So I can do, you know, equal and then input value. 
and then it's pressed. So it's gonna be as easy as that. So again, I'm just gonna keep this clean. I like using lambdas a lot, so I'm just gonna keep it, this to be one line. And I'm gonna duplicate this a couple of times. So I'm gonna do one for on turn right. I'm going to be doing one for on acceleration. I think I call it acceleration. And then we're gonna do one on reverse. And then except that these ones are going to be different, right? There's gonna be turn right. This is gonna be acceleration or accelerate. And this one, this one is gonna be reverse. And you're gonna think that this is magic, but actually the, the input system is doing a lot for us. So we're gonna get a message once the turn left uh, action gets executed. One when a turn right action is executed, acceleration, and then so on. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity and then we can we can test this and see and make sure that everything is everything is working. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit play. And I know that I'm accelerating if I hit the you know up key. So the the reverse is working, but the acceleration, the up arrow key is not working. Let me make sure that I have those correctly. So it's gonna be accelerate and it's gonna be the up key, reverse. Okay, so that looks right to me. And let me make sure that I have accelerate. Okay, yeah. I think why it's not working because I call it on acceleration and it should be on accelerate. Remember, these need to match the, the actual messages that Unity is going to call. So on accelerate, on accelerate. So now that should get called. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that, hit play. And let's see if this is gonna work. Now I can accelerate, I can you know go on reverse. Let me make sure that I can, so I can now, let's see if I can turn, yep. Okay, so sounds like I can, Yeah, so I think I need to change it to if statements because I want to be able to execute ex execute them. If I am accelerating, I want to be able to turn right and left at the same time. Otherwise, it's not, it's not gonna behave correctly. So let's go ahead and hit play again. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse. There we go, so now that's that's working just fine. Okay, so, so that's great and all, but what if I wanted to press this? So right now I'm pressing them and they're not working. The reason for that is because we haven't really told Unity that these buttons are going to, are actually going to do anything to the input system. So it's actually gonna be pretty easy. It took me a, a, a little while to figure it out, but if you look at the on-screen button, you can also use a stick if you had a stick control. So I'm gonna just use the on-screen button. On this one, remember, we need to bind them to the same actions that we have here on the input control. So in fact, what I'm gonna do, let's go ahead and snap, I think I can snap it here on the button. That way we can we can do the the same actions. So the cool thing with this is Unity is gonna say, okay, this is a button, and regardless if it's a touch button or not, this is going to be going into here and say, okay, what do I have bind to the left arrow? And then what message do I need to send? Is, there's a lot of magic happening, but hopefully it, it'll make sense when we get it all. So I'm gonna do left arrow on this one, and then I'm gonna do another one here. This is gonna be the the right arrow. And then on the acceleration, we need to do, let's go ahead and do the acceleration. It's going to be the up arrow. So we need to be able to bind that as well. Make sure that you don't do that. You do the on-screen button. And we can do, this one is going to be up arrow. And we could also add another button if we wanted to reverse. We can do that later on. I think for this video, we can just keep it simple like that. Okay, let's go ahead and hit play and see if this is going to, so looks like it's all, all working. So you can see how I'm, I'm basically rotating, I can accelerate and everything is working. So yeah, so I think everything is working fine. So let, you, let me just make sure this one, this one is gonna do right arrow, left arrow, acceleration, and then left arrow. So they're basically going back into these bindings and then because we're using the on-screen button, this is gonna work with the touch system as well. Another thing that you can also that you can also do that I found really helpful when I was you know trying to find out how this how this works is you can go back into the player input and you can open the the input debugger. We can also put it in here. And if I were to hit play, this is gonna show you everything that gets loaded. So we can see the actions that got loaded. 
I can also see the users, which in my case is one user, and then what actions I have right now loaded. So I have, you know, all the different player actions that I have in here. If I accelerate, it's going to change, it's going to change to keyboard one left arrow. And you know, it's it's loading everything automatically. I can also do something really cool here if I wanted to simulate the touch. Now if I go back into here, users, actions, then you know, if I hit play, it's going to simulate for some reason when I hit when I hit this, it's a constant touch versus you know, you know, a touch and release. But we can test it with this with action without actually having to deploy to the device. So that's honestly all of that, everything that I wanted to show you, you know, in this, in this video. On the next video, what I'm gonna show you is we're gonna be looking at how we can do, you know, change this to be using AR Foundation and installing some of those components that we're gonna need to, you know, instantiate that car when we find a plane. Also, when we do, I'm gonna be using LiDAR meshing. I want to, I want to be able to put the car on the mesh that got generated. So we're going to be looking at that. And also I'm going to, I'm going to show you how these components are going to work by using, you know, an, else, an actual AR experience. So that's everything that I want to show you, show you today, guys. If you guys have any questions, please let me know.